Hey YouTube, Nick and Carrie here for our weekly gaming recap. Bringing you all your gaming highlights for the week of December 20th, 2014. Last episode of the year! Do, 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 do. Fanfare, fireworks behind us. Pew, pew. No, I don't, have that. I don't think I have that plugin for Sony Vegas. You can't do those animations? I don't know, maybe. I'll see what I can do. Maybe some Disney fireworks, I don't know. <laughs> On to the show! Alrighty, yes. Alright, well the Humble Bundle put together a little video package. Basically thanks to all of us, and you watching, and millions of people not watching, uh, that wave rate. <laughs> We've already helped them raise $50 million. What? There's a lot of people that don't watch that <laughs> donated sorry. to Humble Bundle. $50 million towards charity. Uh, they've donated charities such as Make-A-Wish, the EFF, War Child, Special Effect, and Charity Water. Um, that's just a few. There's like a bunch of other charities they donated to. Um, basically, thanks to the generosity of gamers like us, you, and everybody else, like I said before. Uh, so check out the video. It's good to see where your money's going and, mm -hmm. you know, the good that it does and... That's pretty awesome. It's really cool. Very cool. Uh, Little Big Planet 3 uh, has teamed up with Disney to offer a set of Frozen inspired costumes for Sackboy, Oddsock, and Toggle. Uh, you can choose from Kristoff, Anna, Elsa, there's others as well. They're uh, $2 each or you can get the bundle for $6. Uh, I would advise if you are going to get a couple to at least get the bundle because then you'll get a bonus Olaf costume, which bonus is Olaf. only available if you get the bundle. Ooh. So um, along with the costume, the game does get a winter creator kit, which is a free DLC that adds winter themed decorations uh, for you to build with. So... Now you can create all that snow. Mm -hmm. and, and billions and billions of YouTube let it snow, let it go videos. Oh, I'm sure. And with, worlds and never. Oh, yeah. Little Big Planet Man. Oh, definitely. Let it sack. Well, all you. <laughs> He's sack boy. Let it sack. No, that's that sounds awful. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> All you slick dealers and game deal hounds, be on the lookout. Apparently, Valve has changed some of their deals, and I know people Stuff. like to pinch petties and save buying from key sites that may or may not be selling keys from other regions. Um, now, if keys are marked for Russia, Asia, South America, and Turkey, uh, Valve decided to region lock those keys. So if you add them to another region's account, like North America or Europe or something, it'll tell you, this key is region locked. You can't play it. Too bad. Um, so sad. Region locking sucks all the way around. I kind of understand why Valve did it because of the Rupal falling and all that other stuff. And, you know, a lot of times there's deep discounts for games in other the regions. money exchange, yeah. Because of, you know, their, their economy and how... Uh, the differences in funds that they make per day and stuff like that. But then there's also other stuff where, like, Europe, some of their games are, like, ridiculous in cash and... or money, rather. Um, and, you know, theirs is, like, 30 or $40 more than what we pay. So mm -hmm. it sucks all the way around. There's no good way to fix this problem. Somebody would be screwed over at this point. Um, it's always going to be the gamers in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Just be on the lookout. Alrighty then. Uh, Sims 4 got a free update this week called the Holiday Celebration Pack. Uh, it adds a wreath, snowman, other holiday uh, decorations, and festive sweaters to the game. Okay. Uh, some other updates that also occurred is now you can eat the fruits and vegetables that you harvest from your garden activities. Uh, and now you can die at the various venues that you go to. Die or die? die die you can die okay so there's like many ways to kill your sim but uh -huh. now they can do it at venues like oh. outside of their home okay kind of thing so gotcha. um more realistic awesome um also other new features include extra colors for a variety of existing doors windows and roof trims which is good because some of them were kind of lacking uh <laughs> carries <laughs> Professional opinion. Well, I can't she decorate. Wants way more. I can't, if I'm making a green house and there's only a red freaking door, well, I don't want a Christmas house. Like I need, I need variety. Could totally make Nightmare on Elm Street. Jeez. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Freddy Krueger Sim. They have um, added a business career, athletic career, PTO time for your Sims. What? <laughs> they can get PTO time oh on their my jobs. God. 
<laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, no, this is worse. Oh, God. They also get family leave. They get, they get They're parental Sims. leave. They're Sims. <laughs> they get parental leave. <laughs> Soon you're going to have to manage their vacation and sick, and if they take too much time off work, they're going to be shit canned. They're, they are. They're going to be fired. Oh, God. Um, and they also um, re-enabled the move object on cheat, or move for short. Of course, you know why I like it. Move. move yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to combine different objects in the game when you're building and then move them up and down on things. Um, this was a feature that they had brought over from previous Sims and um, people had been asking for, so I'm glad that they uh, added it in. Okay. Uh, you can check out all of EA's patch notes um, to get all the details because there is several other things. Juicy, juicy Sim 4 details. Yes. You know, maybe take some PTO and read through the patch notes. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems there's uh, been a kerfuffle between the developer. Oh. Yeah. A single Polish man named Pavel, and I'm not going to say his last name because I'll just butcher it. And publisher OV of Spin Tires, which is basically perfectly marketed to YouTube, I guess is the way to describe that name. It's physics-y, and you drive trucks through mud and tow things, and people post... It's a game? Yeah, people post, like, tons of videos on it. It's, it's multiplayer. Farm simulator, but... Yeah, because you know how everybody posts, like, farm simulator videos, and they get, like, crazy amounts of views? Yeah. It's like that. You're just big trucks, and you drive through the mud and haul things, and, you know, Beep. whatever. It's supposed to be pretty awesome based on their, like, mud and... The mud physics well, it's called the way spin that it tires. Out. Be yeah, because the trucks can actually get like stuck in the mud <laughs> realistically, and you have to use like a winch to get them out. I mean, whatever. Uh, anyway, get wood so boards and stuff. yeah, Pavel's <laughs> saying basically the developer ran off with money. The developer is saying they didn't run off with money. They don't know what he's talking about. There's not been a breach of contract. So you know, basically, we kind of just got to wait and see what plays out, where the misunderstanding is with this issue. Um, however. He does go on to say that, you know, if they do actually screw him over, he has all the tech being a one-man developer shop, I guess. He has all the tech and the experience and everything to build a bigger, better, faster, beefier, cheesier, $6 million quesarito man. We'll bring it in. Yeah. So, we'll just have to wait to see how that plays out, and now I want a quesarito. You're an odd one. <laughs> Odd bird. What's wrong with the quesarito? Odd bird. Because, you know, it's like bigger and better than a regular burrito, so that's what he's going to do to spin tires. So it'll be like... Sp Odd bird. Spinarito or like queso tires. Odd bird. <laughs> You're such a weirdo. Oh, God. Six million quesarito man. Bigger, faster, beefier, cheesier. That's what he would be. So, anyway, <laughs> Nintendo announced the official launch date of the classic light gun action game, Junk Cut, for the Wii U console. You want to try that again? <laughs> Junk Cut? Junk Cut, I know. <laughs> Did your gears get stuck in your throat? I was hoping you didn't notice. Oh, we noticed. I was hoping. <laughs> oh, oh, we noticed that one. It's not duck hunt, it's dunk hunt. Dunk hunt. <laughs> you're gonna dunk. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna hunt Patrick Ewing as he dunks basketballs. <laughs> dunk hunt. I don't know where that accent And it's like out of Germany. Maybe it's David Hasselhoff dunking <laughs> basketballs. I don't know where that accent came from. It's got like umlauts over it. Okay, keep going. Anyway. Duck Hunt. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For the Wii U console, um, as Christmas Day. So Christmas Day, you can pick up this uh, new, well, classic <laughs> game. I guess you're going to use the Wii motes, right? Is that correct? Thank you for, um, you know, leading, yeah, to stealing my story, because I just put. Luckily, you won't need the classic zapper gun, which doesn't work Luck today. Luckily, yes. no. They need to bring the classic zapper gun back. No. Is what they need to do, no. and not this orange crap. I want gray. Gray. You should have told me before you did the story. I would have brought my gray zapper out just for this. And the seven. We have more than one. Seven orange ones. But I was we gonna say we have more than we one. We only have like one or two gray ones. I think we have one gray one and two orange ones. I think the gray one's mine. Unless yes, because we know I had an okay. orange one. Right, keep going. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, you do have to use the Wii remote. Thanks for stealing my thunder. Did they at least make a shell to look like a zapper? No. 
Come on, Nintendo. We want to give you money. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's time to feel old because the game is celebrating its 30th anniversary uh, since its original debut, and the game will be $4.99 on the Nintendo eShop. Can you shoot the dog? No. All you need to do is update one thing. <laughs> Give us a stupid piece of plastic that's called a zapper that we attach Wiimotes into, and let us shoot the dog. One for, physical, for one digital. His, for his yappy laugh. Or... <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> oh, I got two stories in a row. You do. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, Warhammer Crest. Qu uh huh. Warhammer. Quesarito. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing so good for so many weeks, and now all of a sudden it's gone. I just lost it. <laughs> it was you the last couple of times. <laughs> okay, let me hear some more. Let me hear some more of that. There you go. Thanks, jerk. <laughs> Warhammer Quest uh -huh. uh, came back, came out. Let's try this again. That wasn't me. <laughs> Warhammer Quest uh -huh. came out back in 2013 okay. for iOS devices. Okay. Uh, it's now been announced to be coming to the PC, Mac, and Linux early next year. Uh, the game is based on the 1995 original board game and features turn-based tactical RPG action along with dungeon exploration. Uh, the Steam version is going to have two versions, the standard edition for 15 bucks. Uh, it gets you three areas in the game as well as the vampire and zombie content pack. Okay, I like that. There is also a deluxe edition. Um, it, it doesn't say what additional extras it includes, but it does have additional extras um, for thirty dollars. Two zombies? Yes. No, I don't know. Don't go <laughs> for the don't price of one. That. Yeah, uh, the game is going to launch on January seventh, and if you pre-order it now, you can get twenty percent off on either edition, I believe. Okay. Yeah, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Cool. Well, visual novel Steins Gate is coming to PlayStation 3 and a PlayStation Vita in 2015. The critically acclaimed visual novel will drop for both North America and Europe, so everybody should be pretty happy about this. Um, if you don't know what Steins Gate is, basically from what I've read, somebody sends a text message into the past and things happen, hoopla, weird Oh, stuff. I read about that. It's kind of like a, what is that story, that Lake House story or whatever? Sure. Uh, anyway, if you tend to scoff at these things, there are rave reviews on Destructoid, Kotaku, Hardcore Gamer, Eurogamer, along with an 85 on Metacritic user score. So it's probably a pretty good game, even though a lot of people probably aren't going to try it because they're like, eh, visual novel. Uh, sounds like once they're done, the developers need to adapt Back to the Future, Pi, and Quantum Leap into visual novels because... Ooh, Quantum Leap! I know! That would be awesome. Could think they're sending text messages back. We could send Sam back. Oh, that's awesome. Maybe you could I be in control of his buddy, and I can't remember his name. Yeah, just remember Sam. It's just yeah, Sam. I think it's on Netflix now. Yeah. I think they put it. I think they brought it out. Awesome. That's awesome. Maybe you can control where he goes and what outfits he wears. Awesome. Whether or not he's gonna be a man or a woman that yeah, show. Yeah. That's all I was thinking. <laughs> or a drag queen, you know, whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> So, Avernum 2 Crystal Souls is a tactical-based turn, tactical turn-based combat game mm -hmm. uh, by yes, Spiderweb Software. Uh, it has over 60 different abilities and battle disciplines, hundreds of artifacts, and dozens of quests as you fight for survival. Uh, the trailer shows how the Empire basically um, wants to get rid of you. They kind of left you alone for a while, and now they're now they definitely want to get rid of you. Um, so you're basically fighting to uh, to stay alive. Uh, the art style caught my eye. I, I like. I really liked it. It kind of reminded me of um, like old Baldur's Gate. Okay. Kind of visual. Yeah. Um, it does have over a hundred towns and dungeons to explore. The game is coming to PC and Mac in January next year, and iPad soon after sometime. Okay. So iPads last. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. And uh, I think you can get the original. A Vernum on, I think it's on sale on Steam right now during the Steam sale. You can check right. out the first one before the second one. That's always a good idea. Yes. So Bossa Labs, the crazy dudes who brought you the wacky Surgeon Simulator and the outlandish I Am Red, are working on a third title, and this one has less silliness and more charm to it. The game is called Worlds Adrift, and it looks like you have the Just Cause 2 infinite grappling hook ability, along with some type of way to build airships with your friends, because this game is multiplayer. 
Um, looks like you'll attach a bunch of pieces to a ship, like wings and jets and things like that. And then it'll become a drift. And while it's floating in the sky, people can grapple under it and swing and all kinds of neat stuff. Cool. Um, not really sure 100% what the game's supposed to be, but it sounds kind of like they don't either. So <laughs> they're looking for your feedback. If you go to uh, worldsdrift.com and give them you know, feedback, criticism, whatever you think. They're kind of at the point where the game's you know, the physics just look like they're working and there's some placeholder art and they're kind of like, hey guys, what do you, what do you think about this? Or what, yeah, where do you want to go? And they're pretty, uh, they're pretty active on their Facebook with the, uh, with the I Am Bread yeah. page and everything like that. So they, they're always commenting and when people, you know, they post all kinds of pictures. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> random stuff in real life. It's an it's interesting really idea. I don't know where they would go with it, but it's kind of cool that you get to cool. an airship and like a grappling hook thing. So That is cool. Uh, Disgaea 5, 5 got a subtitle this week uh, and is now coming to North America and Europe according to uh, Nis America. Uh, the subtitle is called Alliance of Vengeance and is tied to the game's alliance attack battle system uh, as it will let main characters use special moves when their relationships are re aligned. Okay. That's what it says. Cool. Uh, so the RPG also features more than 40 races and jobs and a new stats uh, boosting system called Revenge Mode. Um, obviously, I'm gonna think it has something to do with like a counterattack or some kind of thing when when right. mobs are there. Uh, so the PS4's hardware is going to allow the game to feature 100 characters on the screen uh, at the same nice. time compared to the PS3, which only allowed 10 in previous entries. Is what they said. So yeah, it's it's uh, definitely going to be a step up. Uh, the fame will arrive in fall of next year. Uh, the game, I put the fame instead of the game, the game. <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that, but I was like, okay. I read it correctly, but I typed it <laughs> incorrectly. Good job. All right. So, uh, along with the Disgaea news, Miss America revealed the Awakened Fate ultim uh, Ultimatum is going to come to North America on March 17th and Europe on March 20th of next year. Uh, the game is a roguelike RPG for the PS3 and, um... The sequel, it's a sequel to the game, The Guided Fate Paradox. Uh, so both That's games funny. are getting physical and downloadable uh, releases, which is nice. Yeah. Because a lot of times when we have things come out west, we don't always get the physical copy. Well, the physical is usually limited anyway. When right. When it comes out from like Niz or whatever. Yeah, so. Prepare yourself for more internet anger. Life is Strange is coming out thanks to developer Don't Nod and publisher Square Enix. Um, why? Because they're already being compared to Gone Home, and Gone Home seemed to split people into this whole, like, this is a game, is it not a game, blah, 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 whatever. I mean, it's on a computer and you play it. It's a video game, whatever. Um... So the internet loves to hate these kind of things. The game looks pretty cool to me. You're basically a girl who has some type of time warping abilities uh, who only finds out about them after a tragic event happens. So it's basically Groundhog's Day mixed with like the butterfly effect or Donnie Darko. Um, like any great trailer, the music in the trailer really fit the mood of what they were trying to show. So it's kind of like solemn and angsty because they look like they're in high school and, you know, there's two different girls. One looks like the outcast and one just looks like the normal girl. So it mm. um, should be interesting to play. The only downside for me, not all the people find this a downside, it's five-part episodic game. Mm. So that means I'm not going to play it until the fifth one drops because... You like to do it all in one I shot. I hate that. I always forget what I did. Um, so it's pretty interesting. A lot of people are freaking out that they think Square Enix is making it because the Square Enix logo is first and then it says don't nod, but... Don't nod to the developer. Square Enix is just a publisher. So Square Enix isn't making this, so you don't have to worry about your Final Fantasies or anything like that being made. <laughs> just helping it get out there. Three Sprockets has launched their new hack and slash RPG, Fight the Dragon. Uh -huh. uh, the community, community created game is considered to be a cross between Diablo and Little Big Planet. Uh, which is pretty awesome. That so awesome. in the game, you can team up and adventure through the uh, land, building, battling, and looting. Uh, the game features solo play, split screen, two player, or online multiplayer for up to four people. Uh, you can customize your adventure and also 
Uh, it features in-game adventure construction kit, um, which you can create and share. Oh, that's neat. Which is really cool, yeah. Um, I've had my eye on this game for a while. It was in Steam Early Access. It is available now. Uh, it's on Steam for eleven twenty-four, dollars uh, which is a 25% discount. I believe it's normally fourteen ninety-nine. Okay. And discount ends after the winter after, sale? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Well, tell your friends Shigeru Miyamoto watches our show because he just revealed that Mario Maker includes Online Cherry, which we asked about last week. So he obviously watches the show because totally. he wouldn't reveal it if, you know... He didn't hear we us wouldn't ask prompt him. him. That's right. We had to prompt him for it. Now, the next thing we need to know is what the hell's up with the physics. I've seen all the video breakdowns. I've seen all the stuff where you can change, you know, the bullet shooters from bullet bills to coins and all kinds of stacking enemies and different properties for stuff. Now we just need to know what the hell's going on with the physics. Yeah, between the different games. Yeah. So anyway, it's good to see that Nintendo is actually drip feeding information about Mario Maker. My guess is at least for me, this is probably going to be one of Nintendo's most important games of 2015 mm -hmm. because it could do a whole lot for the online community. They did announce that there will be some kind of, um, not necessarily leaderboard, but like a popularity thing where you can see like what's the most mm -hmm. popular levels when they're sharing. So that'll be good. Um, you know, and we just need to know more once they let us know. Yeah, I think it could be a huge, huge game for them. Yeah. They do it right could be amazing yes yes uh, amazing so rhyme berta if i'm saying that correctly sure we'll go with that <laughs> is a strategy rpg developed by dujin studios next soft plus um and is now available on steam the game draws inspiration from final fantasy Taxi tactics uh with terrorist landscapes that affect how you move and fight um along the battlefield Huh. Uh, the protagonist is a young girl named Olivia who ventures into a mysterious tower with hopes of attaining a relic to help her father who is uh, very sick and dying. Um, Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I love Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, this one caught my eye. I definitely want to check it out. Uh, you can pick it up now for fourteen ninety nine on Steam. Cool. So I don't know if this one is on discount or not with the sale. Okay. I, I don't remember. Well, I hope you liked yourself some Shadowrun. I mean, I'm pretty sure you liked some Shadowrun because it was kickstarted and then there was a director's cut and then there was a standalone expansion. Mm -hmm. So that kind of tells me that there's a lot of gamers that like themselves some cyberpunk action. <laughs> well, grab your umbrella. It's about to get more rainy as they just revealed that there will be more Shadowrun coming to Kickstarter in 2015. This kind of actually raises a bunch of questions to me like, if you were successful enough to do that, why do you need to go back to Kickstarter? Are you going back to Kickstarter just to kickstart, like, extra polish? I don't know. It's like, yeah, I think everybody talks about it and how successful it was. They did well over their goal, I believe. Yeah. So, and I'm sure, you know, since the game has come out, obviously they're making more money on people buying the game. So why do they need to get back to Kickstarter again? Yeah. We won't know until the official Kickstarter page is up. A little interesting. I'm hoping this is kind of just kind of a pre-order polish thing. Like, hey, we raise extra money. We'll put in extra features that we don't have enough funding right now to do kind of thing. Not necessarily to fund the game. I right. think if, if they do it that way, that would be a good use of Kickstarter. Whereas if they just kickstart a whole other game, but kind of like, I don't know, it's going to get to the point where like, you know, your your first game should really fund your next game is how... Right. You get into that weird, like, space-based thing where it's like, you're not meeting it's your goal. It's interesting, yeah. yeah. Well, so, I guess we'll hear more. I yeah. mean, I, I kind of glanced over that and I was like, oh, I need to hear more before I comment on that. I mean, their progression shows they keep making the game better. Right, and so, they, I mean, at least they're working on it. It's still, it's still being, you know, worked on, and they're still doing stuff. And yeah, they keep adding features that fans want. They keep adding stuff, and they're talking to their fans, unlike. Well, there's a bunch of fans that are still mad. Apparently, they a bunch of not. I shouldn't say a bunch of things. Apparently, there are some things that they have promised in the past that did not make it into uh, Shadowrun. But I don't know how true or how much of a like. Was it a comment? Like somebody asked, and they made like a comment to the reply like, hey, we're trying to work on this, or was it like a, an official like mm -hmm. goal that never got, you know, right. like one of those things, so, I don't know. 
So, my last story for today is a pretty big one. Holy crap, it's more than one page. Almost, yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of Minecraft news this Minecraft week. Minecraft Yes, people. lots and lots. So, first, uh, Marcus Pearson, a.k.a. Notch, took the top bid for a home in Beverly Hills for $70 million, uh, making it the most expensive home in Beverly Hills. So that wasn't $700 million? $70 million. Okay. Seventy million is, is high enough. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but that doesn't sound like the most expensive home in Beverly Hills for only seventy million. It is. That's uh, what all the reports are saying. Okay. Cool. So, uh, the twenty-three thousand square foot home is completely furnished, boasts eight bedrooms, fifteen bathrooms, a screening room, a 50, 54 foot curved glass door in the living room uh, that opens up to an infinity pool with iPad controlled fountains, a candy room. Uh, art pieces that include a replica of James Dean's motorcycle and a chromed Modus machine gun. But does it have a hat room? Because he owns a lot of hats. <laughs> I'm sure he could make one of those <laughs> one of those eight bedrooms or something. I'm sure. I want a custom. Uh, so rumor has it that he beat out Beyonce and Jay Z for the house, uh, which closed in less than five days. That's like amazing for a closing. Yeah, but when you have like two celebrities. Warring over house, I'm pretty sure it makes it way easier. Well, I think there's a lot more, yeah, than them, but I think uh, th those are the big names that, yeah. that everybody Once you get to that about. high number. Yeah, so... Gotta weed some people out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, now that Notch has a new pad, immediately uh, someone had to build it in Minecraft, of yep. course. Um, and Makes they did. Sense. Dan Bovey created the work along with a video to match the walkthrough of the house almost... Uh, screen for screen, which is uh, pretty interesting, pretty cool. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have the um, specific or Nate, you know, some of the things, but right. you know, it's got the whole outline and chairs and and stuff like that, which is which is uh, pretty Good damn on impressive. That guy. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Pretty damn impressive. Uh, second, an update has hit the Minecraft game for Xbox One and Xbox 360. That adds its home. No. <laughs> you can just download that on a mod. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it adds new enemies like bats, witches, and wither skeletons, festive explosive fireworks, uh, colored clay to build with, and beacons, and horses. Okay. Uh, the trailer, the big thing was horses, because they kept mentioning it in the trailer like six or seven times. And did we mention horses? Horses. 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 Unicorns, narwhals. <laughs> uh, so the horses can be tamed, ridden, and outfitted with armor to match yours. You can be matching. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, they can also be crossbred with donkeys to create mules. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, the update is out now and is free. Um, no word right now on updates for PlayStation. Um, they just on a tweet they said you know further information was coming, but I don't know if. When an update comes, what the update will be, like what it will entail. I mean, obviously, with my with Microsoft buying yeah. Mojang and, and Minecraft, uh, obviously, I, I would assume that you know more stuff is going to continue to come there. Not to say that they won't. They might do like a Call of Duty thing where it's first on Xbox and then later on PlayStation. I, think I, I could just see I could see a lot of exclusive you know exclusive stuff on Xbox and 360. I mean, I mean, I think some things will come to the PlayStation, but I don't think we'll ever get all of it. Uh, I don't know. We we don't have My, it now. Minecraft is a big thing. Yeah, but we don't have it now. Uh, we don't have a okay. bunch of the stuff that the right. Xbox has. I believe you. Okay. Anyway. Can you crossbreed horses with humans and get centaurs? <laughs> no, but that would be awesome. Because <laughs> then I could then I could do a whole Harry Potter land with it. <laughs> oh jeez. I started awesome. it. I've do the started. forbidden forest. I've oh, that would be it. awesome. I've started yes. it. Crossed over into no no land. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, finally, it was announced that Mojang was teaming up with the Telltale Games. Yep. Uh, the makers of the Tales from the Borderlands, Game of Thrones, The Wolf Among Us, and The Walking Dead to make a Minecraft story mode. Uh, the game will be an episodic narrative-driven game series based on Minecraft's blocky world. Uh, the game is going to feature new characters instead of the story of Steve. What's wrong with Steve? Um, <laughs> and it will be an original experience, according to Telltale. <sighs> so the game is supposed to be coming sometime in 2015 to PC, Mac, mobile devices, Xbox consoles, and PlayStation consoles. Uh, the internet seems kind of divided. Seems almost yeah, it makes like 60-40, 50-50. Like, you know, their feelings are like, 
cool, you know, can't wait to see what they do, and then, like, what the F is this shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, so it's kind of, yeah. you know. But they, got, they have to remember, like, everybody uses, or not everybody, a lot of people use Minecraft to tell stories. What's wrong with Telltale using Minecraft as a to, backdrop to, to tell, tell a story? story. Yeah. It can go anywhere. It's Minecraft. Yeah. Like, Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, yeah. I don't know that, you know, I'm not a fan either of the episodic kind of games like I, I want a complete game and I want to be able to play it and just play it through and right. be done with it because like you like if I start on one part and it's six months or you know however long between the episodes then either a I'm gonna have to go back and replay the whole game because I forgot what happened or what I did or b I'll never pick it up again because yeah that's not a problem like that's that's just yeah so It'll be interesting. I'm sure you know we'll hear more as it as it kind of develops. But uh, it's a uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, we get to end our last show with some hatred. Awesome. A controversial <laughs> game, Hatred, stirred up a bunch of controversy over at Valve HQ. Uh, kind of interesting. For a game, the for a while there, the game was temporarily removed from Steam, mm -hmm. even as it was climbing the Steam Greenlight charts. People couldn't click their little clicker fingers fast enough. Uh, it made it to number seven out of the top 100 Steam Greenlight release or Steam Greenlight page. So that was in a couple hours. People were just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it was just. Um, so Valve removing hatred does not constitute free speech violation. I think we talked about this before. The government has nothing to do with Valve. Valve can do whatever they want. Um, so people are like, oh, free speech. It's like, well, Valve's a corporation. They can just say no to certain things. So what actually happened? Well, Valve's Doug Lombardi told Eurogamer, based on what we've seen on Greenlight, we would not publish hatred on Steam, which raised a bunch of questions because there is some utter crap that has come through Steam Greenlight. Y yes, to um, say the least. So my thinking was maybe this broke the camel's back. It's not necessarily that hatred was the game to tip all the scales in its favor to get or not in its favor, rather, to get thrown off Steam. I think maybe something happened somewhere internally, externally, something where this was like, they were like, nope, that's it. Got to start banning yeah. games. Yep. So maybe this might lead to games being more curated even after they're quote-unquote greenlit. Maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of like you know an up-in-the-air thing. But basically what happened is Big Boss Gabe Newell had to step back in, and his quote, exactly is yesterday i heard that we were taking hatred down from green light since i wasn't up to speed i asked around internally to find out what we to find out why we had done that it turns out that it wasn't a good decision and we'll be putting hatred back up my apologies to you and your team steam is about creation tools for content creators and customers so that kind of tells me that maybe they won't be curating stuff because now that they have the new green light early access or they have the new early access rules where you can't you know like fund your game blah, blah blah and somewhere along the lines it was reported that maybe hatred broke something in like the steam eula or something i don't know what that would be but it was kind of weird so maybe we'll get less crappy games on steam maybe we won't um at this point not getting your indie game on steam is kind of a big deal i mean Steam's kind of turning into this juggernaut, and there are many other places to go besides Steam, like Desura and Dog and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, Steam is kind of the big Still guy the in the room, yeah. and there's. Still the powerhouse. You know, they have a lot of weight, whether they want it or not. So um, I kind of just hope they leave it as it is. And yeah, we have to deal with the crap, but maybe with more voting and stuff like that, and the new Steam um, customized personalization page maybe we can kind of weed stuff out and curated pages and stuff like that so you know we want games big small crappy play. not crappy as long as they're out there i'll at least look at your screenshots and maybe your video and read i'll read your press release i do that all the time um so yeah make the game and it, you know if it sucks then i just won't play it and, you know, <laughs> i won't buy it if it sucks i might even buy it i don't know i'm weird so anyway, that's yes. all for our last yes, show. It for the truly year. is. 
That's, Thanks for admitting that, love. <laughs> that's all for the last show of the year. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. We're taking next week off and the following week. Holidays. Holidays. Um, we will be posting some videos. Carrie will be doing more. Carrie plays Terraria. She's already posted three videos. It's on our channel. Yay. Want to check it out? I uh, want to remind you to check out our store over at pixelarmor.com where we have four awesome retro-inspired t-shirts. Don't forget to check us out on our website at www.weeklygamingrecap.com and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap. You can email us at the address show at weeklygamingrecap.com and we'll read it on the air or answer your question if you have one. And we want to remind you to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. We'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Until next time, see, see you later. later.